The tremendously convenient sheet pan dinner concept is easily applied to pasta sauces. Very quick and convenient way to make delicious vegetable-heavy pastas. I'm going to show you two recipes, more like 2.5, and you can easily do them in the time it takes to boil the pasta. Whoops, there was a camera in that box of orichetti. Half a box, half a pound, 225 grams in salted water. That's two portions. Get yourself one of them boxes of tiny tomatoes. In U.S. grocery stores, these are the fresh tomatoes most likely to actually taste like something in any season. They're pretty solid and you can wash them right in there. It's a one pint box, which is a volume measure, maybe 12 ounces or 340 grams of grape tomatoes for two portions, every single one cut in half. You got to be careful cutting around things. I try to kind of clamp over the tomato with my fingers and then use a sawing motion rather than a pressing motion. I saw with hardly any pressure at all at first until the knife bites through the skin. Until the knife bites, you're at risk of either crushing the tomato or rolling it under your knife and losing control. On those go to the sheet pan, a shallot or any little chunk of onion. I find quarter moons are a good shape for pasta. Cut each half down the middle, then make thin slices across, thin quarter rounds. Big enough to stick to the pasta, small enough so they don't have the texture of slimy worms. A few garlic cloves, and for this recipe it actually helps to not chop them too fine. Big chunks are less likely to burn under the broiler slash grill. And I've got a stick of rosemary here. I'm going to chop this up and put it in the oven with everything else. We'll get more flavor out of it by cooking it real good, though we'll lose the bright green color. No worries. I've got some basil for that. And you can slice a fresh red chili and put it on there too, but I'll call this done. Pepper and salt on everything, plenty of olive oil. Get in there with your hands, get everything coated and spread out into a single even layer. Turn the broiler slash grill on high and slide the pan right under it. If the element is red hot, this should take at the very most five minutes. More than enough time to scan my grocery receipt with Fetch Rewards, the sponsor of this video. Fetch is a totally free app. Whenever you shop for anything, not just food, you open the app, take a picture of their receipt. Hit upload and immediately they send you reward points back. What if you don't have a paper receipt? What if it's in your email? No props. Hit the e-receipt button and the app scans your inbox. Anything eligible from your online shopping or all those times you ordered delivery food? Look at all those points. I have a million Chipotle receipts because that's the only way I can get my kids to eat beans. Once you have your points, you can redeem them for discounts at Amazon or a million other stores or restaurants. You can even give them to charity. There, I just gave 10 bucks to Girls Who Code. Easiest donation of my life. Let me check those tomatoes, and you go down to the description and hit my link. It'll take you to where you can download Fetch Rewards and get 3,000 points when you scan your first receipt. A limited time offer. Thank you, Fetch. So yeah, as soon as my tomato skins are browning, that's enough for me. Take it much further than that, and the tomatoes will just fall apart, which, you know, you might like. Drain those orchetti, and I'm going to throw just half of them back in the pan. I want to show you two ways to do this. The first one being to just throw in your broiled stuff, maybe a little raw oil just for the fruity taste you lose in the oven, some fresh basil because because it tastes good and will be bright green, unlike the rosemary in there, and then stir. I want to stir it hard enough that some of the tomatoes break up and you get a little saucy consistency, but if I stir too hard, all the tomato guts will fall out of their skins and I just have tomato sauce with a bunch of skin swimming around it. I'm not into that. I still want intact roasted tomato halves in there to bite through. A little cheese on top, and sometimes I like a little fresh oil on the cheese. Super tasty, super summery pasta. Couldn't be easier, but what if you wanted something more like a tomato sauce? Well, pasta in the pan, sieve on top, dump in all the roasted stuff, grab a wooden spoon and grind. Push down as you swirl around. If you have a food mill, you could use that instead. This is basically an improvised food mill. And eventually there's nothing but skins in the sieve. Underneath is an incredibly fresh tasting tomato sauce. It's got bright rawness, but also some of those dark roasted flavors. Maybe it doesn't look too pretty since it's so refined, but you can mix back in a few of your chunkies just to give it some texture. Maybe a little fresh oil, tear in the fresh basil, and toss to coat everything. And there you go. If all the skins were swimming around loose in there, they'd be kind of gross. That is silky smooth and would work fine without cheese, but I'm a do cheese because I can. It's amazing how different that tastes compared to a more conventional tomato sauce. But now let's try something super unconventional. This is a recipe I improvised the other day. Get another half a box of pasta boiling. Fennel, one of my favorite vegetables. Cut off the stalks and save those for later. Take the bulb, stand it up, and carefully cut it in half. Take the halves and shave them. Slice as thinly as conveniently possible with the knife. This stuff has the texture of celery, but a mild licorice flavor. And when those strips are just barely cooked, they kind of feel like noodles in your mouth on the sheet pan. Radicchio, also known as Italian chicory. Texture-wise, radicchio is kind of halfway between lettuce and cabbage. I'll pull off any wilted outer leaves there and just barely shave off the root end because I want the core intact. I'm going to cut this into wedges and I need the core to hold the leaves together. The flavor of radicchio is bitter, pleasantly bitter, though it mellows out a bit when you cook 
market. The Italians often grill it, which I suppose we're going to do if you're among those people who call a broiler a grill. Beans, cannellini beans, drained, rinsed, and tapped a little dry onto the pan with those. Time to season everything with pepper and salt. Not too much salt on the beans. They're already salty. A whole bunch of chili flakes to make this spicy. And then I'm doing caraway seeds. I love these. My wife doesn't. Nor does she like the licorice flavor or bitter greens. Can you tell she's out of town today? Olive oil everywhere. Toss to coat everything and get it flattened into a single layer and under the red hot top element once again. While we wait for all that to brown, I'll harvest the green fronds from those fennel tops. I found out the hard way that when you use these to garnish food, they can kind of look like green body hair. It helps to chop them up a little bit first. After a couple of minutes, the beans should start to explode, literally explode. Love it. It helps them break down into a sauce and they brown very deliciously. Four or five minutes total, that tray is done. Drain the pasta, throw it back in the pot, and then I'll scoop in a bunch of my roasted beans. Just the beans, because what I want to do now is stir this really aggressively. I want to mash up the beans just enough so they'll form a paste and bind everything together a bit. In goes all my other good stuff, and hmm, that pot does not offer enough space in which to toss everything together. Hey, you know what would work better? The pan. It's already dirty, and it's already warm, so it won't suck the heat out of this. A drizzle of fresh oil, and I'll scatter on my chopped fennel fronds. Now I've got plenty of space to toss this around. Easily four portions of food there, even though there's only half a box of pasta. A really great vegetable-heavy plate this is. Certainly it's great with some pecorino on top if you want. Quick roasted radicchio, still crisp but nicely browned. This mixture of pasta and beans is very reminiscent of Sicily or of North Africa, which is no doubt where the Sicilians got the idea. And what would taste even more North African would be the vegan version of this. Squeeze on a bunch of lemon instead of grating on cheese. Toss, and this is very tasty, warm, but you could probably chill this and call it a pasta salad if you wanted. The moral of the story is take little bits of whatever you have, throw them on a sheet pan under the grill for a few minutes, and toss everything with pasta. It's pretty tough to go wrong.